We have solar storms being launched both Earth's side and on the Sun's far side, and there's an annular solar eclipse for those with a midnight sun. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is remaining a bit on the busy side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing sun, look at this, you can see bands in the north and bands in the south. As a matter of fact, we've had four sunspots on the Earth-facing disk this week. In fact, region 28, 29 there in the south, right late on the 5th, wham, it fires off a near-Earth directed solar storm. This storm looks like it's gonna graze us off to the east, probably not gonna give us all that much, if anything at all, so it's not too much of a big deal. But meanwhile, we also have regions, three regions that are rotating off of the Earth-facing disk on the west limb, region 2827, region 2830, and region 2831. And the region 2831 has actually been firing off some sea flare kisses as it's left the, the Earth-facing disk. So we're seeing that X-ray flux kind of pop up a little bit. There's a little bit of noise on the bands right now from those C-class flares, but that's basically going to be disappearing over the next couple days. But then we also have new regions rotating into Earth view from the east. As we take a look in the both in the north and in the south, there are regions including old region 2824 and 2826. And yes, it looks like they're still flare active. So as we'll take a look uh, more closely on the sun's far side. This is stereo A and it's staring at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see region 2829 around center disk. You'll watch it fire off that near earth directed solar storm. But if you look at the east limb, both in the north and in the south, you'll see there are some solar storms being launched. So these regions that have yet to really rotate into earth view are solar storm producers and they could give us yet another round of solar storms. On top of that, we also have a bigger coronal hole in the south that will be rotating, eh, it's kind of rotating into Earth view right now. And this region could in about 10 days or so give us some more fast solar wind and bring us up to storm levels. So Aurora photographers, you have something to look forward to. We've got solar storm producers and amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Look at all these bright regions. It's definitely boosting the solar flux. We are beginning to climb out of the marginal range and almost into the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side, and luckily with these kind of conditions, it looks like it's going to continue. And for a special treat, Early on the 10th, we are going to be having a beautiful annular solar eclipse. Now, this eclipse is not visible for everyone, but it will be visible for much of Europe and Asia, as well as part of Northwest Africa and much of North America in the Atlantic, and of course, everybody in the Northern Hemisphere who gets a midnight sun. So early on the 10th, uh, at UTC time, you'll be able to see this annular solar eclipse, but you gotta be careful. Make sure you wear eclipse glasses or glasses that are made for viewing eclipses so you do not hurt your eyes. Never stare at the sun directly. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being, of course, on the 10th. And that's when we get that annular solar eclipse, right? That's when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, and it blocks out the sun. So enjoy that annular eclipse. It's going to happen in the wee early hours of June 10th. So enjoy if you happen to be at high latitudes. You'll have a lot of fun. And then after that, we're still going to be dealing with only a waxing crescent. And by the 13th, the moon will only be about 10% illuminated, so now is a great time to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have a little bit of that waning fast solar wind from a coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the past 24 hours or so, and that's still going to give us maybe a little bit of disturbed conditions, especially at high latitudes. NOAA's expecting about active conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a major storm, but most likely it will be a little bit less than that. And then things will begin to settle down a bit. We also might still get a little 
little bit of a bump up right around on the 11th from that solar storm that's moving east of Earth. Likely not a big deal, probably won't even notice it, but I just thought I'd mention it. Now, mid-latitudes, we're really also not expecting all that much. We're really sitting at unsettled conditions, and that's pretty much how it will stay. Although we do have about a 25% chance of active conditions over the next 24 hours. And again, things will likely wane after that and continue to get quiet. So Aurora photographers, especially if you're at mid-latitudes, most likely kind of sit this one out. We do have some solar storm producers, though, as, you, as we talked about on the sun's far side, they're going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days. And we have that bigger coronal hole with much better chance of fast solar wind hitting us and keeping us at sustained active conditions in about, you know, maybe a little bit more than a week from now. So, you know, hold your breath, hang in there, and some aurora, more aurora chances are coming, I promise. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green right now. We do have a few active regions on the Earth-facing disk, but we don't have any uh, red flags for big flares. So our M-flare risk remains reasonably low, and that means that we have no risk for radio blackouts, which should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Now, we do have multiple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and that's nice because that means we're actually continuing to keep that solar flux boosted. We're sitting around 80 right now and we'll dip down a little bit, probably into the mid 70s for a few days, and then we'll begin to climb back out of it again as more regions from the sun's far side rotate back into Earth view. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders feel very good. The propagation on Earth's day side is well into the marginal range and we might even see it continue to climb up out of that and get closer and closer to the good range because as solar cycle 25 ramps up, we are definitely seeing more bright regions on both the sun's earth side and the sun's far side. And that's just fantastic news for everyone. Now also, as we continue to climb out of solar uh, minimum, we are still seeing a higher cosmic ray flux than we'd like to see. And so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose. This is the D2 minor range, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week continues to show signs of ramping up solar cycle 25. We've had multiple solar storms being launched. One of them is on the Earth-facing disk, but it's not necessarily Earth-directed, but it's still a good sign. We've had multiple solar storms being launched on the sun's far side as well. So activity continues to climb. And even though we may not have really all that much aurora activity this week, we do have that annular solar eclipse for those people at high latitudes and who have a midnight sun. So, you know, maybe if you're an aurora photographer, you can take a chance to capture some of that eclipse uh, footage as well. And that will kind of hold you on until we get more chances for solar storms, which will be coming in the next week or so. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, there's good news for you as well, because we're seeing more and more bright regions on the Earth-facing disk and on the sun's far side. And with those increased bright regions comes increased solar flux. We are well into the marginal range range for radio propagation on Earth's day side, and luckily with more regions rotating into Earth view, that is only going to improve. So we might actually be getting to start climbing toward uh, good radio propagation. Won't that be nice? So enjoy. And also GPS users, well, you know, we're not really experiencing too much in, in terms of uh, aurora activity right now, and, you know, not don't have any worries for radio blackouts. So as long as you stay away from those Dawn Dust Terminators and away from any any aurora that might be happening over the next 24 hours, your GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.